Kentucky State Police and the coroner's office are investigating after our body was found in a wooded area here in Wolf County. A UK student is recovering after being hit in the head with wood railing in a fight that ended with several gunshots. Stocks rally at the start of the day, but still finish down. We take a closer look at the numbers. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. The search for a missing man has come to a sad end. Investigators found the body of 50-year-old George Neese in Wolf County. He'd been missing for nearly a week. WKYT Sam Smith shows us how he was found in our top story at 5. The entrance to this wooded area is behind me. It goes down and back up this way where there's a waterfall. I'm told that's where the body was found. Family members and search and rescue officials say it was 50-year-old George Neese that was found here. He's been missing since last Wednesday, and he was found at the base of the waterfall. This ravine and wooded area was searched yesterday afternoon because someone mentioned to Kentucky State Police that it was a popular shortcut used by people walking from Russell Drive to the parkway. Neese and his fiance were living in the area. Nisa's fiance tells me they're from northern Kentucky and were only in the area to take care of his nephew's funeral arrangements. Officials say Nice likely fell about 40 feet. You know, my guess is he came through, you know, maybe got a little too close to the edge. Uh, we've done several waterfall rescues in the past. They're typically slick around the edge and, you know, perhaps it was dark and he just got a little too close. A Kentucky State Police say this investigation is ongoing. In Wolf County, Sam Smith. WKYT. Nisa's funeral arrangements are still pending as family hopes to collect donations once plans are sell, set to help pay for the cost. A Madison County high school teacher is accused of having sexual contact with a student. 24 year old Brandy Whitaker is charged with rape, sodomy, and sexual abuse. Whitaker teaches at Madison Southern. Berea police say the victim is a 16 year old male student. We're told the contact happened twice, both times off campus. In a statement, Madison County Schools said the district is cooperating with police and conducting its own internal investigation. An off-campus party prompted a safety alert at UK overnight. Police say the trouble began when three men were told to leave a home on Crescent Avenue. As WKYT's Hillary Thornton shows us, that's when the situation turned violent and someone ended up injured. A party here on Crescent Avenue took a scary turn for dozens of UK students after a group of people asked to leave, then beat a student with wood railing and fired several shots. Police were called to the home just before 2 o'clock this morning, triggering a campus wide safety alert just as many students move back with classes starting up tomorrow. Quint Williamson just moved to Lexington to start his freshman year. He says he was having a good time making some new friends. When things took a dangerous turn, it was like all good vibes, and then like there was like a ton of people here, like as you know, and it just got really chaotic and out of hand, like very quick. Officers say a group of at least three men showed up at the home near University Avenue, asking to come into the party. That is when officers say things got out of hand. Neighbors living next door say their roommate noticed that and ran over to help, again asking that group to leave. Police say one of those men then took the wood railing from the porch and repeatedly hit the student who ran over to help. He was rushed to the hospital. Meanwhile, that group of suspects ran off, firing at least three shots on their way. Gunshots were fired like in the air. While it was an unexpected turn to his start at college, Williamson says it does not change how he feels about being here. I love Lexington so far, like despite like everything that happened tonight. And we are told that student who was hit repeatedly in the head with that wood railing is home from the hospital, and he did have to receive several staples in his head. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Police say they only have a vague description of the suspects. It's a great week to make some outdoor plans. That it is. The pleasant fall like weather will be sticking around for a few more days. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here now with an early check of your forecast. Yeah, guys, absolutely phenomenal with what we're seeing for this time of the year. To be this cool 
with sunshine is very rare to have uh, in the summer months out there. We're still obviously in summer. Look outside though on how we started out the day. Look at some of the lows this morning. 48 degrees into Mount Sterling, Liberty, Campbellsville, E-Town into the upper 40s. We were at 50 from Cynthia to Moorhead and most areas, upper 40s and low 50s out there to start out the day. Beautiful skies over top of Lexington with only low 70s and the air is dry. 46% humidity. Winds are coming at us from the northwest at 12 miles an hour. It is that northwesterly wind that is ushering in this fall blast that has been a prominent flow so far for the month of August here across the Commonwealth. Big area of low pressure spinning into southern parts of Canada. High pressure to our west. It's the old squeeze play. We're on the good side of that. If you like fall weather, we've got it for you for at least two or three more days right on into the start of the weekend. About as good as it gets this time of year. Though speaking of that weekend, I do have a few changes beginning to show up in that forecast as usual. We'll break it down for you when I get back here in just a few minutes, guys. Chris, thank you. A prison escapee is back in custody after nearly five months on the run. The Kentucky Department of Corrections says Kelly Conway was caught last night in Galveston, Texas. He and James Dennis escaped from the Blackburn Correctional Complex in Lexington on April 7th. Dennis hasn't been caught, but state police say he could be in the Henderson area. A grand jury has indicted two people accused of stealing more than $20,000 from a disabled woman. Lexington police say the woman paid Glenn Stamper to do work on her house that he either never completed or didn't do right. We're told his girlfriend, Ashley Shackelford, continued to collect the woman's money after Stamper was arrested on unrelated charges last summer. Both have been charged with exploitation and theft. We're tracking the investigation into an early morning apartment fire. That fire started in the attic of a unit on Appian Crossing Way around 6.30 this morning. Firefighters say a sprinkler system in the attic helped them put out the flames. Absolutely, it could have been much worse. The time of day, you've got most family members home at this early time in the morning, uh, so there's a lot of potential for life hazard there. Um, and so to have those sprinklers up there to keep it in check is really a good thing. 12 apartments in the building had to be evacuated. No one was hurt. A crash involving a school bus sent seven children to the hospital. Our county by county coverage begins in Bell County. The sheriff's department says a white Toyota hit the bus while trying to make a turn. The car had an adult and three children inside, while the bus had a driver, an aide, and 17 children on board. None of the injuries were life threatening. The state auditor says a report on the Jackson County Sheriff's Office will be sent to the Attorney General to consider possible criminal charges. State Auditor Adam Edlin says the audit involves former Sheriff Denny Payman. The report says that he did not keep adequate records and did not manage the financial activities of his office. In the report, Payman blamed issues on a dispute with the fiscal court, but the auditor says that does not alleviate him of his responsibility. And in Laurel County, police made an arrest in a string of thefts from one business. The sheriff's office says that 39-year-old Dave Cooper stole more than $10,000 in items from the business on Kentucky 192 between February and this month. Those items included saws and a welder. Cooper is charged with burglary and theft. The stock market opened the day on track for recovery, but lost all of its gains before the closing bell. As Marley Hall shows us, investors are expecting another unpredictable day tomorrow. The rally that investors were looking for just didn't last. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, which was up more than 300 points most of the day, fizzled just before the close and ended down more than 200 points. Not quite panic, but real concern. Real Real, I better get my money out of the market right this second. The early rally came after China's central bank cut its key interest rate in an effort to energize the world's second largest economy. A new survey here in the U.S. also found increased consumer confidence this month. The market fundamentals here in the U.S. market are still pretty strong. The markets hadn't had a correction in four years, and investors say it was about time for one. Long-term investors are encouraged to sit tight and ride it out. I would definitely stay in the market. Don't panic. Don't sell. Whatever you do. Experts also warn the road could be bumpy. Fall is typically the most volatile season on Wall Street. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. The S&P 500 dropped 25 points, while the Nasdaq dropped 19. The latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. 
Eight Ashley Madison users have sued the cheating website. The lawsuits claim Ashley Madison failed to take reasonable steps to protect its users. Hackers hit the site and released personal information about users. Those suing want class action status. A fourth American is now being called a hero following an attempted attack on a train in Paris. Virginia native Mark Mugulin wrestled an AK-47 from the gunman. He ended up wounded and is in intensive care at a French hospital. Three other Americans have already been credited with stopping the gunman. One of them also helped save the man. He was squirting blood out of the left or right side of his neck. I just stuck uh, two of my fingers in his the hole, found what I thought to be the artery, pushed down, and the bleeding stopped. The city of Sacramento, California, is planning a parade to welcome the American heroes home. Shaker Town, bike riders, and the number one cancer killer of men and women in the United States. It may seem like an odd combination, but each year hundreds of people gather for a weekend in September that's much more than a bike ride. Many have a deep personal reason for taking part in the bike trek to Shaker Town. Janice Varanikar and her sister Lee grew up in a large family, but bonded early in life. Only a year apart, their mother raised them like twins. Both had asthma as children, but Lee did not outgrow it. She also grew up around secondhand cigarette smoke and was raised in the steel mill district of Chicago. At age 42, doctors found a spot on her lung. One year later, at her one year checkup, it was everywhere. It was on her spine, her brain, and her lungs were covered. Janice's sister was given three months to live. She made it five and a half years. Wow. And she lived in those five and a half years. And she, like, she started riding her bike and was an inspiration of many, many people. Janice's sister lost her battle with lung disease five years ago. And that's when Janice decided she needed to honor her sister and fight lung cancer. The bike trek to Shaker Town sounded like a fun way to do that. Only one problem. I didn't even own a bike two months before I did it. She raised thousands of dollars through pledges, started training for long distance riding, and off she went. And it's very doable because if I could do it, anybody could do it. <laughs> the cyclists ride in groups along the scenic hills near Shaker Town. If a rider needs help, SAG or support and gear cars <laughs> follow behind to help. They have awesome people and SAGs that are behind us. I was the very last person to come in on both days. Jana's sister never smoked and took care of herself, but she still fell victim to the number one cancer killer of women. Now Janice carries on the fight for her. People love to hear her story. I've told it a million times and without, with some with emotion, but I miss her a ton. I wish she could do it with me, but she's yeah. doing it with me. Yes, she is. And to learn more about how you can participate in the bike trek to Shaker Town, you still have plenty of time. You can go to www.biketrektoshakertown.org. It is next month, September 19th through the 21st. That's a Saturday through a Monday. And they're celebrating the 30th year of that ride. Time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Chipotle is putting up the Help Wanted sign. The restaurant chain plans to hire 4,000 new employees in just one day. The mass hiring will take place on September 9th. Chipotle says more restaurants are opening, but they have fewer job applicants. Stomach problems are fairly common for people of all ages, but when is an upset stomach cause for concern and a trip to the doctor? Adam McCoy explains the difference and what you should do about it. For Jacqueline Hunter, Life started unraveling when she was in college. There was a lot of blood any time I went to the bathroom. That's whenever I was finally like, hey, there's something not right. Jacqueline was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, a gastrointestinal disease that often begins when people are in their late teens or early 20s. Inflammation or colitis can be due to infection or it can be uh, due to unknown causes and it's the unknown causes or idiopathic colitis, which is typically termed ulcerative colitis. The symptoms are pretty specific. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, bleeding. And for patients like Jacqueline, these symptoms don't just occur once in a while. To truly have ulcerative colitis, one needs to have the symptoms on a chronic basis, and that would be for at least a few weeks, some would say for a few months. It's a tough disease to live with. 
It hurt so much that you don't want to go anywhere. And in Jacqueline's case, the first two medicines she tried didn't work. However, a clinical trial that she's participated in for the last three years turned her life around. I could get a job. I could move around. I could do anything really that I want to do. Dr. Wolf thinks the future looks good for Jacqueline and others who have the disease. Every year or two, there are new agents that are being approved. For Health Minute, I'm Adam McCoy. Well, you have probably spent a day or two in the sun this summer. Sun exposure can put you, though, at risk for skin cancer. It's almost always curable when caught and treated early. People with fair skin, blue or green eyes, and blonde or red hair, or a family history of melanoma are at greater risk. Inspecting your skin monthly can help you identify anything suspicious. Look at those funny brown things on your skin and see how large they are. Have they changed? Probably change is probably the most important thing, and change is not just width uh, and diameter, but also elevation. Most melanomas are black or brown, but they may also be skin colored pink, red, even purple. For